So, good afternoon, everyone. I've just started recording our webinar for this afternoon. Welcome to Science with Report Writing. This is our orientation workshop from um, Academic Skills. So my name is Tree, and I'm one of the learning advisors. Um, you would have probably heard a lot about our services this week. If you haven't, I'll just um, quickly explain that one of the um, great ways in which we can assist uh, students um, throughout their journey is through our one-to-one -one, uh, appointments. These are free, confidential, and very personalized um, advice service. So if you've got a quick question throughout the semester um, that we can uh, answer in 10 to 15 minutes, please come to our drop-ins. And these drop-ins are run by our lovely peer writers who are our later year coursework students who've been there and done that and can really assist you. Now, if you've got a question that you'd like to um, talk through um, your, uh, with someone at Academic Skills, we've got our writing coaches 30 minute appointments or our learning advisor 45 minute appointments. And these appointments, um, what you can do is come and see us about a study skill issue, or um, if you've got a draft, for example, for a learning advisor appointment, you can submit that draft of your work. So for, say, for example, your science report, and we'll review it before you come in to see us in person, or um, we chat to you via Zoom, or you can also seek written feedback. All right, just to get started on a conversation about a report, um, how many of you have had um, lots of experience writing science reports? And which areas are you from? Are you um, going to be studying biology, psychology, computers? Where, where else are you studying? So what courses are you undertaking this semester that will require you to write a science report? Thank you. Okay, let's see the answers here. Biology and chemistry, psychology. So for those of the students who um, posted, thank you very much. Um, have you had uh, a lot of experience writing reports? Um, and if so, what is your understanding of the purpose of a report? Or um, do we have students who are completely new to science report writing? Not much experience, okay. And you're probably wondering if um, the expectations of report writing is very different to um, what you've um, used to or you're from your previous experience. Is that correct? Okay. Well, I might just continue on and um, if you've got a comment to make or a question, please um, continue to post on the chat or to raise your hand. Okay, so basically with a science report, what you're doing is you're presenting to your scientific community your experiment or your study. Um, and what it means is that they're really expecting to see um, your what is your understanding um, about the purpose of the experiments. So you need to do more than simply describe the experiment, for instance, you need to be persuade them that you uh, understand the purpose of the experiment. So why are you testing a particular hypothesis um, and why the experiment was important? Um, what is your understanding of the experiment? Um, what did you find and why is the finding meaningful? So really the purpose of the report is to explain why you are testing a hypothesis, hypothesis and why your findings are meaningful, as I was saying before. And um, your role as a, as a scholar is to um, communicate this um, concisely and precisely and to persuade your reader of your interpretation of the results. Okay, so every part of your report is going to be um, having to contribute to the overall purpose of the report. So in the introduction, this is when you indicate um, what the problem is, what are you testing, um, you introduce your um, study aims and your hypothesis. So the um, introduction should really outline why you are testing the hypothesis. The methodology section um, will outline how did you go about testing the hypothesis, for instance, or hypotheses. Um, and the results is uh, outlining what did you find in relation to your aims or um, research question or hypothesis. 
um, and the disc in the discussion, you'll be drawing on literature to help you to interpret the findings um, in order to make an argument about, um, you know, the significance of the findings. So um, why is it meaningful? Did you achieve um, your hypothesis or yes or no? You will ultimately develop a narrative in relation to your findings and its meaning. So where would you start when it comes to science report writing? Well, there are different ways in which you could start and it also depends on the course that you're uh, undertaking in the field and the discipline as well. So it's good to kind of look at the instructions, to look at the marking rubric um, and uh, to give you an indication of the learning objectives of um, what it is that you're doing. Um, but there are different ways in which you can start. So having a look at, you know, do you start off the hypothesis? Um, with the hypothesis, um, what are you expecting to find in the literature? What is your understanding of the hypothesis? And really the hypothesis is basically, um, what are you expecting to find in terms of the relationship between variables? And this relationship um, uh, is the result of, I guess, what you're expecting to find is the result of your research. So and what's in the literature? Um, what is our current understanding? So what's already known in the literature? Um, and also the hypothesis also needs to be um, testable. Sorry, I don't know why it moved. Um, so if you start from the hypothesis, um, so what is it that you're trying to test? And then what did you find? Well, you can start with the findings in terms of um, looking at the um, research, the, the aims of the experiment. What did you find? What were the results? So what does the data say and what's the narrative that you can develop in relation to that? And then um, think about how you um, articulate that in the introduction, um, etc. And how you state the research um, or experimental aims um, and hypothesis or hypotheses. So there are different ways in which you could do that. Um, there are different possible sections to your report too. Um, generally speaking, um, a lot of you might go follow the what we call the IMRAD structure, which is the um, introduction methods, um, results and discussion. Um, but often reports will also contain um, a title page. Um, sometimes you're asked to provide an abstract, so a concise um, summary of your um, experiment findings and um, implications or significance, um, followed by the, the various sections in terms of introduction. Introduction. So an introduction is um, written as a separate thing to the abstract, so you just can't cut and paste what you've written in the abstract into the introduction. The introduction should contain a bit more background context and set up the research aims, followed by the method section, results, discussion, references and appendices. Now, um, often the discussion section is the most important section and that's where a lot of the um, marks will all the weight, um, the marks will be allocated in your report. Um, and uh, I'm going to, through this webinar, go through the different sections. Um, I'll start with the introduction and then um, actually conclude by talking about the, the abstracts and editing your work. Okay, so introduction. So if the purpose of the introduction is to introduce to your reader um, your experiment um, or your study, um, you need to be able to demonstrate what is that you understand about the study. Um, so show that you understand why you carried out the study and um, why you've tested the hypothesis. So an introduction will commonly contain the following um, sections. It will contain the background or context um, and proceed to define the problem or the issue that your study will address or the experiment addresses, um, what we know and what we don't know. So it in, engages with the literature. So you need to engage critically with the literature, um, demonstrate what we know um, about this topic or this issue or this problem based on uh, the research out there and also where there are gaps or problems or um, uncertainties and what we don't yet quite understand. That then should the information that you provide um, in terms of the background context and um, defining the problem should help lead logically to the research or the study aims and hypotheses. Um, so there has to be a connection between that. Uh, and then of course, um, you've got the rationale for your methods. 
Here's an example from biology in terms of statement of aims. Um, this one says, this study aims to identify the um, uh, bacterial um, phage which can treat antibiotic resistant MRSA by using DNA fingerprinting to compare the profiles of it. And um, it's specifying. So you can have a very specific aim here, as you can see. And here in psychology, the um, example of um, as the study or experimental aim is this, following from these studies, that indicates that the student here has already spoken about the literature. Um, and then based on that, and based on that understanding, um, the study's aim is to therefore experiment, uh, the aim of this experiment is to therefore determine if adults who had childhood imaginary companion would firstly perform higher in the CEQ and secondly in the STS compared to adults without the imaginary companions. Here's an, another example um, from psychology, but this time it's uh, in relation to the hypothesis statement. Uh, and here, um, there appears to be two hypotheses. Firstly, it is hypothesis. The student says that adults who had childhood ICs would have a higher orientation to fantasy than adults who did not have one. And secondly, the adults who had a childhood imaginary companion will engage in more self-talk than adults who do not have um, who did not have one. So, um, and this information, the hypotheses are based on um, the findings um, from the literature. And um, as I was saying before, um, hypotheses um, are supposed to be uh, test testable. Okay, so the, um, well, I'm going to show you now two examples of introductions. One actually comes from a student sample and the other one from, um, I, I think it's also another student sample, but in a, it's published in a, um, a, a really important text. So let's have a look at both. Um, and what we're looking for is whether or not you do, you understand why they're testing the hypothesis um, that they do. Um, and can you identify the key parts of an, a good introduction that we um, say is in a, in a good introduction? So do we have the background or context? Do we know what the problem is? Um, is there a statement of the risk, the study aim and hypothesis, for instance, and or hypothesis? Okay, so in this example, I'll just um, give you a moment to uh, have a read and then we'll unpack it together. Okay, so what do you think of it? Does it meet the requirements of a good introduction of a science report? Do you understand why um, they're conducting the experiment? Or is that unclear based on the information provided? What do you think? So what's good to see is that the students providing some background context here and starts off broadly by introducing um, the topic of recombination and telling us what it's about. And note that you've got a, a citation here. So they're referring to the work of Campbell, Mitchell and Rees back in 1997. And here they start to move on to talk about the frequency of recombination, um, which is an important measure of linkage between genes and the same chromosome. So giving us a sense of why it's important um, and then talking about um, the distance and so forth. Giving us some information, but 
um, and towards the end talks about experiments of the fly dis um, drosophila, philia, um, excuse me for my pronunciation. Um, and then in the aim, the aim of this report is to analyze the occurrence of recombinational events on the X chromosome as manifested in the phenotypes of, of so forth. So um, based on the background context provided in the introduction, uh, are the, is the aim of the report justified is it clear why they're doing what they're doing or is it still a little bit unclear? And someone's put in chat. Yes, um, I would agree there. So a student says maybe the, um, they did not define the issue. Uh, so whilst it's good to have a little back, bit of background context, um, you may agree with me that um, there isn't sufficient information as to why the specific aim, because maybe they need to, to um, outline the, the problem um, uh, more clearly, uh, which then should lead to the uh, aim of the report. Now, if you compare this introduction to the next one that I'm going to show you, is this a better introduction in your view? So this is the first two paragraphs. Um, the introduction is a little bit longer, so there's a third paragraph that I'd like to show you too. Is the title useful for understanding what the um, report is about? Does it provide the purpose? And focus? Yes. So a student posted yes. The title is very helpful. Oops. Shift. Go back to the other one. Sorry, I pressed the button. Okay, let's unpack it together, shall we? So if you look at the opening paragraph, Current estimates of the below ground production of N by pasture legumes are scarce and rely mainly on data from harvested macro roots. So you've got a citation there with little account taken of fine root material or soluble root N leached by root washing. So a lot is quite is achieved in that opening sentence, isn't it? So that's really providing us with some factual information, some background context, and telling us what we know about the topic of um, uh, below ground production and what it relies on and how there's very um, there's a gap or problem particularly as you read on sampling to obtain the entire root biomass is extremely difficult so some of the here are some of the challenges and difficulties and here's why since many roots particularly those pasture species are fragile and too fine to be recovered by wet sieving and so on. And then in addition to that, there's another problem um, in terms of the interface between the root and the soil, which is um, the student saying is not easy to determine and so on. Uh, and by the end of the paragraph, what the student is establishing here very clearly is we therefore need a better approach or approach um, that will enable us to do the following things. So um, they're setting up the problem uh, the topic, the problem, and um, what we need to do about it. And we need a solution to it. So then the introduction, in the introduction, the student um, continues by introducing the existing techniques, which they say uh, are sophisticated. So sophisticated techniques exist to label roots with 15N by exposure of shoots and so on. And again, note the um, integration of the literature here and the, um, the citations that are provided. So here you can see that they're synthesizing from a number of studies, which uh, supports and gives weight to um, the, the points that they are making. So there's a level of credibility here and um, we're starting to see signs of critical analysis and critical thinking from the student. We can see that they're also reading the relevant literature too because it sounds like they know what they're talking about when it comes to this topic. 
And then if you read on, um, note the word however. So that signals to the reader that there is a problem. So whilst there are um, sophisticated techniques that exist, as the student says, um, there are still some, the, the techniques aren't um, perfect and there are problems. Uh, and here are the, some of the issues. Um, these techniques require complex and expensive um, enclosure equipment, which has this uh, limitation. So then if you read on furthermore, you've got this other problem. So then in the third paragraph of the introduction, so you'll note that this is a, um, a longer introduction than the first introduction. Now it also depends, the length of your introduction will depend on um, the word count limit and uh, the amount of literature in this area and whether or not you are expect, expected to really engage with the literature either briefly or uh, at a more in-depth level. So this would appear to me to be uh, a longer or more significant report than, than the first one. So in the third paragraph of the introduction, so now having established for us that whilst there are existing techniques and there are problems, um, the student now moves on to talk about a particular um, type of technique, the split root technique, um, uh, which has also been introduced. Uh, and here they pretty much review that technique um, and they continue to talk about um, the various uh, applications um, and what um, some studies have found in relation to it. Uh, what I want to draw your attention to in that um, longer paragraph is, um, where's that sentence? I think it's just a middle bit of it. Um, feeding of individual is, okay, so Russell and Fillory using a stem feeding technique have shown that in situ, uh, but they indicated that the technique was not adaptable to all plants, particularly pasture species. So here we're moving to um, still limitations or problems with the technique um, and that feeding of individual leaves with solution containing 15N is a technique that has been widely used for physiological studies. So they're drawing attention to, um, attention to a particular technique here. And then they're talking about the potential of the technique for investigating soil plant endodynamics, which is what the, 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 they want to look at. Um, and they're saying that it was noted um, as long as 10 years ago by um, this study in 85, following the use of so forth. Um, so there's a potential there. And the experiments reported um, are designed for the following. So they do outline um, at the end of this uh, introduction towards the end, outline the experimental um, aims here. So to assess the use of simple 15N leaf feeding technique, specifically in relation to this. And number two is to obtain quantitative estimates. Okay. So um, from the example here, do you feel confident that the student A understands and knows what they're doing and B, um, you understand why the experiment was carried out in the first place. Yes, they gave detailed background information about why the issue was important. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So that, that Exam, the two examples of introductions can show you a contrast and can we give you a, a sense of um, the level of detail, but also you can see the, the development of a narrative here and it's very clear, it's quite systematic um, and it provides enough context and information and background information for us um, to understand um, the importance of the study. Okay, so that's what you want to be achieving with your own um, work. Now, following on from the uh, introduction and the statement of aims, um, you should be able to outline your uh, methodology. So how did you go about operationalizing, if I should say that, um, your research and the study? So really um, showing how did you go about testing your hypothesis? 
Um, methods can be quite straightforward and often very descriptive uh, and you tend to uh, really make it concise as possible. So really a tight summary of um, your methodology, your methods, how did you approach it, how did you go about um, testing your hypothesis, uh, and you should be able to provide sufficient detail so that um, the purpose of it is that other scientists, other researchers, researchers can reproduce what you've done, um, uh, can, can um, replicate what you've done. Um, so the, here, that's why we're saying the, that you need to provide enough detail for the work to be reproducible and falsifiable. Now, if you're doing um, studies like biology, whereby there is a lab um, methods, uh, and you might be able to refer to it or uh, summarise from it. Um, what It's important that if you do vary the methodology at all or, or an aspect of your methods to uh, indicate um, what they are. Uh, in some areas like psychology, um, there, you are required to provide a very specific um, outline of method, methods using subheadings. And the specific headings could be the following here um, as an example in psychology and you would be following the APA method um, or requirements here and here you can see the use of the subheadings like design, participants and procedure, etc. So that's an example of the um, level of detail uh, that you could be expected to provide uh, in relation to the method section of your report. Now, when it comes to reporting your um, results, it's important to indicate very clearly what are your key findings here. Um, so uh, often involves a description of the data and the outcomes of the experiment. So make sure that you, when you are reporting your results, that the re results are aligned with the hypothesis or aim. So um, do it quite systematically. If there are two research aims, what did you find in relation to aim one? Um, uh, uh, you know, what did you, achieve in relation to hypothesis one, um, did you confirm it, uh, or, um, or it's still uncertain, or there are issues there. So it can be, um, like the method section, um, quite still quite descriptive, and it's important that you highlight your key findings because not all results are equal. Um, when it comes to looking at your results, ask yourself, um, what does the data say? What story can I tell? How does it relate to uh, my hypothesis um, and um, study aim? So the less important results can be um, shifted to the appendix uh, and any, um, it's important that you highlight as best as possible uh, the key findings there so that we're not lost um, in terms of what's most important and what's not. So when it comes to um, writing your results, um, what are the things that you could do? Um, certainly the best practice is to present your evidence to support or reject your hypothesis. So um, do you think your hypothesis will be supported or rejected by your results? Why, why not? Because there might be some limitations to the study that might have influenced the results. Uh, you might have to decide on your most important findings. Um, which ones do you want to highlight and why? Uh, what are the implications and significance of those findings um, and at the end of the day you've got to make a decision as to what to include and um, what to leave out. So what's most relevant here, uh, especially for um, telling your story about the results. Often in the results section you are just reporting on the results and you leave um, the discussion of the results and the inter interpretation of the results uh, until the discussion section. So um, it's important that you do present your results in the logical order and um, the order can be, like I said, uh, in terms of uh, most, most significant results to least significant results, depending on the narrative that you're trying to tell or going from the least to the most important or um, in relation to systematically um, going through your research aims um, and hypotheses. Uh, but even within that, um, research aim one, for instance, you might have a narrative in terms of um, most important result to lease or um, vice versa. Again, it depends on what it is that you wish to highlight. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, it's important to organize it in such a way that your reader is able to follow and understand um, your results. 
So when it comes to presenting, here's an example of presenting in a logical order. This comes from an actual student sample in relation to talking about difference and variance in their samples. Um, and this is about insect population this, they were studying. So here you can see, we see that, we see the, um, the use of the, the word um, role, the word we, even though it's, it was their experiment. Um, and then they refer specifically to a figure, so drawing our attention to a particular figure. There is a significant difference. That's what the students reporting on. A similar difference in gene expression levels is observed between X, Y, and Z, um, and so on. And there's no difference between the populations of so and so. And here's this figure that they refer to, um, and so forth. So you can see um, a narrative being developed here, and they're taking us through it in a logical way. So when it comes to report uh, tips on uh, drafting your figures and tables, again, you're doing so, so that um, the most important points um, are, are highlighted. Um, you should treat the tables and figures as standalone, that it should be understandable. Um, so think about the points that you wanna make and how you're going to represent it graphically um, or in a table. Now, whether or not you choose to do so in a table or a figure or, or graph, um, it depends on what you're trying to achieve because um, uh, when you draw up a table, um, you're pretty much saying all the information there is important. But if you're trying to show trends um, and relationships, maybe um, a figure or, or, or a graph is um, more appropriate. Think about the software that you um, have available that you can help you to draw up a, um, a useful table or figure. Um, so what tools are available, shape shading pattern tools, um, anyone's in specific to your area um, that's recommended. Um, so it's important that you don't clutter up your figure unnecessary with any unnecessary legends or symbols or numbers. Um, and make sure that you don't use um, jargon um, and then you label your access very clearly. And, uh, and again, Talk of, speaking of storytelling, make sure that you um, think about the title for your figures to highlight the key point. Um, an example is here, uh, rather than saying the effect of X and Y, um, you should say instead X increases as Y increases. Again, get some recommendations from your tutor. So if in doubt, speak with your tutor um, and lecturer uh, to ask them what is that they, they expect and what, what is it that they want to see whatever way that you present your tables and figures and graphs, it's important that you are consistent in, in the style and that you follow the style that you've been asked to follow um, because you'll probably be given a particular style to work from. Uh, and yeah, sorting out your data from most important relationship, um, to show the most important relationship between the variables. So um, be try and be succinct um, as much as possible and really capture the essence of um, what is it that you want to show in your um, tables or figures? And here, uh, it's important to explain what your figures mean in your um, in your writing. Here's an example um, of some student. Uh, so here in this figure one, the graph compares. So we can see that it compares the following things, um, and before addition to so forth. But does it tell you um, what we're actually seeing? Is it interpreting it for us? So it shows that it compares it, but what is the com actual comparison? Again, whilst we show you some examples, they're just, they're samples, they're not exemplars. And there's always room for improvement, yeah? So here's an example of, of that. So I'll leave you with that thought um, about how it can be improved on. Same here um, with the table, it says the mean rate of streaming before and after the addition. Or, so it's telling us what the table is showing. Um, and the other thing is that, but does it um, draw attention to anything in particular? And maybe that's um, part of the discussion. Okay, so speaking of discussion section, uh, as I was saying earlier, the discussion section is often considered the most important section of your report. And that's why a lot more points will be allocated to um, the discussion section. And this is where you really are able to demonstrate your critical thinking, your understanding and relate the, uh, your interpretation of the results back to the introduction and align it with the introduction. So 
um, with the literature that you might have drawn on earlier in your introduction to provide some background context in terms of what we should um, expect to find. Uh, so what did you find? Did you find what was expected or um, that the findings was unexpected and why? Uh, so ultimately, this the purpose of the discussion is to indicate um, uh, what the results mean and um, show that you understand the importance of the results. So even if the uh, study or the experiment didn't go according to plan, um, what were the key insights that you gained from having done the experiment? So you demonstrate that you've learned from it uh, and that you can still uh, understand the value of having done an experiment um, and based on the literature. So to help you to structure and write your discussion, here are some of our key tips. Um, we uh, sort of suggest that you think about your key points. Overall, what is the narrative? What's the story you want to tell? Um, and uh, make sure that you do the following things. You argue with the results, support or do not support the hypotheses. Um, making sure that you explain the results or the observations that were unexpected. So, um, and, and again, this could help you to think about how you structure it too. So do you talk about um, the results that were expected and then proceed to talk about the results that were unexpected uh, and, and, and why? Uh, so making sure you link the results back to the field to so link it to the introduction as I was saying. And remember, your job is to persuade the reader of, um, uh, you know, that you to show, highlight your critical thinking, to show the reader that you understand um, the purpose of the, the experiment or the study um, and make sure that you are persuading them of your interpretation. So the validity of your, um, uh, your findings and also your experiment despite the limitations. So, you know, there was still value in your um, study even though um, there might have been some limitations. And if um, you do highlight limitations, it's best not to end it with that. It's good to show that um, based on these limitations and, uh, you know, you can explain these results um, also due to the limitations uh, and in future, this is what the a new experiment could do. So you can point to possible um, improvements for next time because the reason why you might have had the results that you had um, was due to some methodological changes or um, due to some error during the experiment. Okay, so I really want to reiterate uh, and emphasize here the, the importance of and not of understanding just the value or the process of going through this, um, that you can still get a really good mark even if the experiment didn't go according to plan. Because really at the end of the day, Marcus really want to see um, your ability to think critically and your understanding of the literature and your understanding why, why, why it went wrong, what were the limitations to your study and to have a way forward in terms of thinking about what would you do next time um, uh, to get a better understanding of, of um, the, the, the theory, for instance. So, so long as you can provide an explanation um, for why the experiment didn't work out as expected. Okay, so that's a positive, right? Um, and so any questions there? If not, I'll just continue on um, with the discussion section. Um, and when it comes to writing it, um, treat it as a, a standalone section in the sense that it's a nice way to kind of remind the reader of um, your study's I mean, aim or purpose. And the reason is because often a lot of, of um, science reports, particularly in the first years, don't contain an overly long um, conclusion at all. Um, and the discussion conclusion is often kind of combined together. So this is an opportunity for you to kind of just remind the reader um, what you set up to do, um, how you went about doing it, um, and uh, what did you find uh, based on your methods. Um, so for example, whether the original hypothesis was supported, um, and in terms of how the findings answered the research question or met the objectives or um, research aims or study aims. Um, and at the end of the day, when you're drawing um, on the literature to help you to interpret your results, um, its meaning is that you can also indicate very clearly um, you, whether or not you agree or disagree with the findings of um, other researchers. So here, uh, an example from a student, um, they say in the unknown, um, 
was uh, identified for this, this was because the results indicated that the DNA profile of SAP21 had similar pattern and shaping fragments. And then, um, so you can see here that they're already referring to the literature, so the unknown, um, and what the results indicate. And SAP26 has previously been shown. So again, um, relating it back to the literature and such research was conducted by X and therefore the results obtained from this experiment is concurrent with previous research. So showing us that what the students um, study found is similar to and consistent with um, previous research. So um, there wasn't uh, a different finding there. So the study pretty much um, shows that um, what adds weight to what we already know. Okay, here's another example. The findings support the notion um, that just a single night of restricted sleep. So again, um, by even stating that, they're referring to the literature. They also support recently published findings suggesting the following. So uh, it is critical uh, that you do draw on the literature uh, to uh, discuss your findings um, and the findings meaning, because it would only strengthen your analysis. So this is just a summary of um, the key things um, that you could do to strengthen and make sure that you've got a good discussion section is start with your findings, explain your findings using the literature. Um, so you need to, so any claims that you make uh, about your findings, uh, you need to be able to support it um, with the literature, with reference to the literature. So in this case, you might say results from that, um, from other experiments, and um, specify uh, those experiments. And that's when you can provide a citation. And then here you say, they, they indicate the following thing. Um, so when it comes to then talking about the limitations, so what did you find that was expected? Um, what did you find that wasn't uh, expected and why? So here you might find um, that a discussion of limitations um, would be uh, necessary here. Um, so that you can then, so here an example is the extraction method and bacteria used may have been met, antibacterial effect was not able to be displayed. So that, so there, here's a limitation of the study that might have impacted on um, the results or the findings. Um, and then the implications. So um, what are the implications of the study? And here the student uh, moves towards talking about uh, their findings in the, and the limitations of findings to the implications by saying perhaps using a more common bacterium involved in infections traditionally treated by rubus ideus um, would show a more effective antibacterial activity. Now we then move on to um, broadening it out to talking about future research. So if we want to increase our understanding and knowledge of this area, um, what future research could be conducted? And again, that's again um, hopefully acknowledging that you understand um, the field and you understand um, uh, that you've done your, your literature reading. Um, so you're demonstrating your credibility as a scholar by taking us through um, those key things. So it's important um, when it comes to writing and one of the key tips that we have for you is, is certainly to organise your writing around what we call topic sentences because the way that we write academically is in terms of units of structure and the first um, sentence of the paragraph, so the units of structure is a paragraphs and the first sentence of the paragraph is what we call topic sentence. And a good topic sentence would indicate the key idea of the paragraph and that key idea would be relevant for developing the overall um, narrative or key message of the report. Now, um, just to give you an example of the significance of um, uh, topic sentences in carrying the narrative and advancing the narrative and also allowing readers to follow your work. And by the way, you know, um, when, when markers are very busy and they're marking so hundreds of reports, reports, topic sentences are going to make their life a lot easier because it, um, they can then quickly see that you uh, are understanding um, the, um, the, the, the study um, aims and um, that you can interpret the results and so on. So they can see um, your overall narrative. 
And here is an example. So species dif differentiation occurs due to a number of evolutionary mechanisms, mutation. And then here they're drawing um, specifically to variation in H. Um, Ameri uh, Amigera population, maybe due to the mutations. Uh, and then they move on to talking about the difference in gene expression due to um, environmental conditions. Um, they also talk about transcriptional plasticity uh, seen in other insects. And then another reason for the increase in insecticide resistant populations. Um, and then they signal the conclusion, same conclusion these populations show due to the following things. So hopefully just by reading the topic sentences, you get a sense of what the report's about. And this is just coming from the discussion section um, and, uh, and what they were looking for in terms of studying uh, species differentiation. What does that tell us about the evolution of the species, um, especially in relation to how they become resistant to insecticide um, and so on. So we were looking at the characteristics of these uh, uh, insects and how they've evolved over time to become resistant and the role that um, various factors play. So they're, therefore they're telling that important story based on their um, study and findings there. So after you've got the topic sentence which should indicate the key point or the main idea of the paragraph uh, and, uh, and that main idea needs to be relevant for developing the overall narrative or argument of your um, of your report, then the sentences um, that follow should elaborate on that idea or point uh, and provide supporting evidence. So these are your supporting sentences. So one way of visualizing a paragraph or good paragraph is to see it like a hamburger. So the topic sentence and the concluding or linking sentence holds the ingredients of the um, hamburger together. Uh, the ingredients um, uh, if you like, well, so the, um, whether it's a, a good paragraph or good hamburger will depend on the ingredients that you bring forth um, and, and therefore make it satisfying. So here's a nice um, consumable, uh, uh, if you like, hamburger in the sense that um, it has the key features of a good paragraph. Now, if you find that you've got overly long paragraphs um, and a good paragraph is usually between 150 to 200 words, if you find that you're going more, way more than that, then it could be that your paragraph contains too many ideas and actually it would be better for you to um, split the ide ideas up and make it into a separate paragraph um, because the principle of good paragraphing is that it it should be unified, so um, focus on one key idea, and uh, it should be coherent. That one key idea should be um, developed in a coherent way, so each sentence is developing that idea. Um, and um, to what extent do you, in terms of develop that idea, and how you're supporting that idea, would depend on the quality of the evidence that you bring. Um, to supporting your uh, the main idea of the paragraph. And for some of you, when you're drafting your paragraphs, it could be that the main point is in the middle of the paragraph, and if that's the case, it makes um, a huge difference if you just lift that sentence and cut and paste and put it at the topic sentence level. It will require some tweaking and reframing of the paragraph in order to do so. And then the, the rest of the sentences should follow, but it will also require some editing and revision so that it fits. So here's an example of um, a paragraph from Stuart's work. Um, um, this is, I think, comes from a biology report. So topic sentence there, you can see in blue, the first opening sentence. And you can see in relation to the supporting sentences um, that the student goes off to explain uh, and provide supporting evidence um, drawing on the literature. So referring to the literature. So reviews of extraction methods of plants indicate the following. This method has been used in past research analysis. Therefore, the shaking method used in this experiment may have created a less concentrated extract. So they're trying to explain 
um, what method they used for the experiment, how they used that method might, might have re resulted in, a, in an unexpected or different result. Uh, and therefore, in future, um, what kind of uh, method um, or, you know, so they could have used a different bacterium, for instance. And here, that's what they end with. Um, perhaps using a more common bacterium involved in infections traditionally treated by rubus um, ileus would show us more effective antibacterial activity. Okay, any questions there? I hope these examples um, are helpful. So when it comes to, in terms of reporting um, verbs and tense and so on, it's important that you do use the past tense um, when you are talking about your completed study, so what you did and what you found. The analysis did not prove hypothesis as an example. Um, and it's important to use the present tense for any situation where by the information conti continues to be true. So here, inexperienced programmers need to use simple language when, and when, and you also use the present tense when the sentence focuses on the document. Um, so this graph shows, this study investigates, and so on. Uh, use modal verbs um, like could, uh, and should or may, um, and to comment on your results. Uh, in, it could also be considered as um, hedging kind of words as well, because if unless you're absolutely certain of your results, um, then you can say so. So these results can be explained or relates to um, instead of saying may. But by saying may, you're injecting in um, what you're saying is we don't have sufficient evidence uh, to say definitely and this imbues reader respect for your analysis um, because if it's still speculative, if, it's, if the um, information is still uncertain, then it's more appropriate to use modal verbs like may or could be explained by X. Okay. So in terms of the conclusions, um, now uh, not all reports have conclusions, some do, and when they do, it's usually very short, very brief summary of the key results um, and the implications of those results. So um, like I said, it could be you know, a sentence or two often or um, a, a short paragraph. Now I've left um, the abstract to the end. Some of you, because some of you might not need it, to write an abstract and others will. Um, but if you do write one, it's important to uh, be able to understand the key differences between an introduction and an abstract. So the introduction we talked about earlier in this webinar and what I said about that was that uh, it needs to explain, provide some really important background context for us to, need to understand the study. So understand um, the problem, the issue, um, the reasons for the experiment uh, and of course that that then leads to the research or study aim or aims and hypotheses uh, and it draws on the literature. Now with the abstract, um, the abstract can't go into um, detailed background context, it provides um, sufficient context so and often it's uh, a sentence or two um, and abstracts are usually about 200 words to 250. Now it depends on the requirements of your um, lecturer or course convener. Uh, so brief background context, um, it does contain problem or a statement and hypothesis or aim and, um, and outlines uh, the method, the key findings. So the bulk of the abstract would actually uh, be in relation to outlining the findings um, key findings and a good abstract would actually include a statement about the significance of the findings, so, so what? So make sure that you get the balance right and also that you are developing a coherent narrative here as well um, and uh, ensure that uh, th there's a logical flow of ideas when it comes to abstract writing. And here's an example um, and you'll note here that the, the context is only really um, one sentence, the opening sentence, followed by um, the statement of aims and hypothesis. 
uh, and then the methods is quite actually quite lengthy for the nature of this um, project, followed by um, the results. So in this case, um, the, the method was important um, for, to outline. A note that the, this abstract doesn't contain um, a statement about the significance of the findings. So this is an example from um, psychology. So have a look at some examples and also when you are reading the literature, look, read, um, look at how abstracts are constructed, um, what's, uh, what's articulated and what's left out on the abstract. Because at the end of the day, abstract should be uh, a concise overview. Um, you shouldn't, it shouldn't be a mystery novel. You should be putting up front um, why your study is important because often an abstract um, in the academic world is a selling point for your project. It tells the reader why they need to read on, um, why they need to read the rest of your report, uh, because uh, if they don't, this is what they'll be missing out on. So do you have any questions for me? Um, I should say before we go into questions that it's really important to make time to edit your report uh, in order to ensure um, to improve the overall quality of the report that you're submitting. And we do make a distinction between proofreading uh, and um, editing your work. And when it comes to editing your work, we suggest um, this particular process that goes from the macro uh, to the micro. So really importantly, start with the argument or the key message of your report, followed by the, um, the structure. Is it logical? Does it support the overall key message? followed by um, paragraphing. Are you um, using top and si topic sentences effectively to carry your key messages? And, um, and how are you are clearly articulating your ideas? Um, and are you using appropriate terminology and words um, to accurately capture uh, your interpretation of the results uh, and the significance of those findings? Uh, so do you have any questions for me? I'm going to stop the recording um, to allow you time enough and if you need to go to another session please um, by all means um, to go to that one otherwise I'm happy to hang around for the next five minutes to answer any questions that you have. Um, if you like access to the resources here um, to please go to our, our uh, academic skills website to view the videos. If you don't have access to YouTube, you can view the materials via our academic skills orientation site. And this site is, um, you can self-enroll. So I'm going to stop the recording now. And thank you, I really thank you for joining me this afternoon to talk about science report writing. And I will, sorry, stop the recording now. <laughs>